chemical properties of matter. And we'll start with physical properties. Oh, there we go. Physical properties are properties that can be observed or measured. And um, for example, I have some table salt here, or sorry, that's not the salt, <laughs> that's the sugar. I have some sugar and uh, sugar, if I look at this, so I can see that the sugar is, so let's see, sugar, let's call it table sugar. It is white. It is, well, I don't know if you can see this or if you can get your own sugar there, but it's also fairly crystalline looking. They look like little tiny crystals. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so those are some of the properties. I mean, we could also, we can't really tell by looking at it, uh, but uh, most of us know and have experience with the fact that sugar dissolves in water. So soluble in water. That's a property that we can observe. And um, let's see, so I just happen to have another substance here. So uh, this is calcium chloride used for winemaking and home brewing, and I use it for making cheese. So that's right here. And so this is gonna be calcium chloride. Uh, Sorry, I just used the formula there. I should write the name since I just said it. Calcium chloride, also a white substance. Doesn't look so crystalline. It looks like uh, little white uh, spheres. And they're not shiny. And I'm sorry if that's hard to see on the video. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Yeah, um, and again, it turns out these are soluble in water as well. And, um, oh, so let's see, let's do the sugar. So I just added some water to it. Looks like it's starting to dissolve. A lot of sugar will actually dissolve in water, so now it's just a matter of time and persistence. You can see that there's a lot less sugar in there. Uh, maybe in a future video I'll show it actually having it all dissolve, but we'll get back to business here. Um, and what I want you to do in this space right here is choose a substance in your home, uh, name it, describe it, and, and when you describe it, use its physical properties, such as the ones that we're doing here. You can do color, um, you can do shape, you can do um, whether it dissolves in water, um, lots of properties are possible. Other properties that were not, so, but I do want you to put that down here. Other properties, physical properties would be, so uh, examples. Um, I tell you what, put it down at the bottom. We're gonna have number three here, example. So other physical properties. Would be boiling point. Uh, molar mass which we'll talk about coming up. Um, let's see, uh, pressure. If it's a gas. So anything you can measure or observe, that's what we're looking for. And those are physical properties. Now, physical changes, 
are going to be any change that doesn't break chemical bonds. Any change that doesn't break chemical bonds. Um, and another word for physical change, another way of saying it is going to be physical process. So a physical change and a physical process are the same, two ways of referring to the same thing. And as an example of a physical change or a physical process, you could start with H2O solid. If you add heat or raise temperature, which is a, a similar thing, so raise T, and I'm using capital T for temperature like we just talked about, you can turn it into H2O liquid. But you'll note that you have H2O before and you have H2O afterwards. So those are the bonds we're talking about. So. Uh, no broken bonds in H2O. Okay, that's what I mean. So you have the same thing um, that you started with and that you ended with chemically. Something has changed about it and the phase has changed, meaning it's changed from a solid to a liquid, um, but no bonds have been broken. And we'll talk about examples where bonds are broken. Uh, let's check in, check in on our sugar now because a physical process so is going to be dissolving sugar see any solid in there? I think there's a couple bubbles which is weird but no actual solid so um, another example of a physical process is going to be dissolving sugar. And sugar, it's, uh, uh, let's see, sugar would be its common name. Its IUPAC name would be sucrose. And uh, its formula, C12H22O11. And I will, so, and I'll write sucrose here as well. Now, what we just dissolving sugar is going to take C12H22O11 in the solid phase, and it's still C12H22O11, and we get an AQ here. And this is our first look at AQ, which means aqueous. And we'll see it a lot, but aqueous means here, that's a, just a scribble, means dissolved in water. Means dissolved in water. But what's important to us now is that this none of the bonds in this uh, sucrose, this sugar, have broken. It's true, it used to be solid, and now it's dissolved, and we're calling that aqueous, but no bonds have been broken. And here's our third example. And you can imagine that we've got a substance right here, and it's a solid. And in this time, it's actually turned into what I would say is more of a gas, although I still think those particles are too close together, but we'll go with it. Um, and solid going to gas, that's a process that's called sublimation. Okay. And we know that none of the bond, we know these are atoms because they're just like the picture we drew before with the solid, so these are atoms. And now these atoms have changed uh, phase to a gas. So, and yes. <laughs> uh, so no bonds are broken. You've just moved the atoms farther apart, which is sort of what we've done here, except we've done it with a molecule. 
we've moved the molecules farther apart into the liquid phase, just a tiny bit farther apart, remember. Okay, so now let's talk about chemical properties and changes. And chemical properties and changes, we lump in the same category, at least the way I teach it. So a chemical prop or a chemical change is any change in which chemical bonds are broken. Any change in which chemical bonds are broken. And that's based, that is the definition of a chemical reaction. So a chemical change is a chemical reaction. because that's how we're going to define a chemical reaction. A chemical reaction is any process or change where bonds are broken, okay? Um, now, uh, in an example here, we've got H2O, and we're going to take two H2O liquids, and we're going to break them into two H2Os, sorry, two H2s plus one, oh, two, there we go. So this will be our first chemical reaction. We're calling it a chemical change right now. And you can see here, the H's are next to an O. And again, we're not here yet, but if I were to draw what we were talking about as the Lewis structure, here is the Lewis structure with shape for water. Here is hydrogen, and here is oxygen, O2. And you can see that the OH bond has been broken because the O and the H are no longer next to each other. And now they've, in fact, um, I'm gonna go back to this. Any change in which chemical bonds are broken or made and or made because some chemical reactions will just break bonds, some will make bonds, and this one here has done both. So that's a chemical change. And a chemical property is, uh, or chemical properties are a list of chemical reactions for a substance. Oop, I'm sorry. I used RxN for my shorthand for reaction. I should define that and then use an abbreviation as I'm about to use it again. Sorry about that. So a chemical reaction, RxN, right there um, and that's what I'll, uh, we do all, deal a lot with chemical reactions so we're going to use that abbreviation a lot and we'll add an s there because it's a list of chemical reactions and here in this picture we've got what could be nh3 in the gas phase and it's going to uh, well in this particular case 2nh3 goes to n2 gas plus 3 H2 gas, where the hydrogens are the smaller ones, the nitrogens are the bigger ones. And again, it's a chemical reaction. So this will be an example. And you only know that they, those are the particular atoms because I told you. Now, pure substances versus mixtures. A pure substance is made of a single chemical substance. which I think we may have known that definition ahead of time. Um, so some examples of pure substances that you might find in your home would be sodium chloride, uh, sucrose, which is usually solid when it's pure in your home. So this is table sugar. 
this is table salt. Um, I don't know. So, um, so if you're a welder, you may have, uh, or if somebody uh, needs additional oxygen to breathe, you may have an O2 gas tank. Uh, those tend to be 99.9 .9 plus percent pure. So, uh, because you're going for the oxygen there. Um, one more example, if you have a pre-1982 penny, those are 100% copper. And copper, as you work your way through learning the um, elements, is C-U, capital C, lowercase u. Um, yeah, those are some examples of pure substances. Mixtures, well, there's going to be a lot more mixtures in your house, I assure you. Mixtures are just, um, uh, consist of two or more substances. So there's going to be lots of mixtures in your house. And mixtures, we're going to immediately break them into two categories. We're going to break them into what are called homogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous and heterogeneous. And these are both mixtures or kinds of mixtures, which may be apparent from the fact that I'm breaking them up, but I'm still going to write it. Homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. So homogeneous mixtures are uniform in appearance. Throughout. And, I mean, basically, heterogeneous mixtures are not uniform. And if you look right here, I'll just give an example of a homogeneous mixture. A homogeneous mixture is sugar water. So sugar dissolved in water. So if you look at this, you can see that there's nothing but a, I mean, it looks like water, right? You never know it wasn't water just by looking at it. But we saw the sugar dissolve in this. So um, it is a mixture and it is a homogeneous mixture. Salt water is another example. Um, let's see, other example, oh, let's give an example of a heterogeneous mixture. Classic example, Rocky Road ice cream. I mean, it's rocky road, so it's going to have uh, bumps and chunks in it. And I'm not even sure exactly, is it chocolate chunks in there? Um, I'm a, oh, another classic example, cookies and cream ice cream. And I give that example because that is my favorite flavor of ice cream. But the idea is that when you go from place to place in the ice cream, Sometimes you'll be in ice cream and sometimes you'll be for cookies and cream and cookies. It's not uniform. Another example is going to be soda. So, or fizzy soda. Fizzy soda has the liquid and it has gas bubbles. Or let's say this. It has, uh, has gas bubbles. Because... Once all the gas bubbles go away, and it's not fizzy anymore, so flat soda actually is a homogeneous mixture. And we're mostly interested in homogeneous mixtures for general chemistry and most of chemistry because they're simple, they're uniform. We give a specific name to homogeneous mixtures. A homogeneous mixture is a solution. So, and 
So when I use the word solution through the rest of this um, course and any other course I teach, what I mean is a homogeneous mixture. It's uniform throughout. We use it so much, there is an abbreviation for a solution. And what I would like you to do is below the word abbreviation solution is find a solution in your house and describe why it's a, what it is and why it's a solution or what it is. Yeah, what, describe a solution that you would found or you could make in your house other than the ones that I've done here.